So, if we wanted to make this piece, it's pretty simple. It's symmetrical, X and Y, but it has two sides, two different top and bottom machining patterns. So, if we were to create this as a design, we can do it pretty simply just by creating circles which represent each one of the machining paths. So we have a circle here which represents the outer diameter of the part, one which represents the center hole. We added one for the pocket that we see in side two there. And we're going to add another one which represents the pocket on side one. That's really all there is to the design. And if we think about looking at this part kind of top down and visualizing all the machining paths, kind of like we had x-ray vision, we could see them all from the top view, this is what we'd have. So now let's turn these into actual machine paths. So we're gonna start with the center hole. Uh, and we're not gonna quite take it all the way through, but we're gonna take it most of the way through. And then we're going to do the next path on side one. And this is that ring that we see there, that pocket ring. And the one thing we want to do is give each thing kind of a very descriptive name, each machining path a very descriptive name. And the most important part is we want to let, have some kind of reminder to us which ones are going to be part of side one, or in this case I'm calling cut one, and which are going to be part of side two, which we'll call cut two. When we get out onto the machine, we'll run all of side one, cut one, and we're going to flip the part over, and then we'll run all of side two, or cut two. Okay, so now we've created all of the machining paths that we're gonna to need to go out and make one of these parts. And because it's symmetrical, it makes it pretty easy on the machine to flip it end for end and have access to both sides of the part and do this. But what I really need to do here is make a, a batch of these and so rather than just making one we have a piece of material that we should be able to get about eight into and so as long as we space them out evenly the parts are symmetrical as long as the spacing between the parts is even we should still have a symmetrical grouping once we're done we're going to align that to the center of the material now you can see that if we took this block and flipped it end for end, what we have on the left side of the center line is exactly the same as what we have on the right side of the center line. Now we created the machining paths just for the original object when we only had one of them. We now need to go back and extend those to all the other copies in the array that we just made. And it's really easy to do. I generally like to do the machining paths from, on just the single object first when they're being defined. And then later, once we have the, the nesting created, then it's easy just to select the objects that all meet that same machining path. And you basically just tell it to calculate again and it will then extend it to all those paths. So here's the the overall look of what these are going to be. Now we're previewing it as if it was all cut on one side. When we cut it, we're actually going to cut it on two sides. And so the beginning of that is we need to have a very accurate center line on the, on the material. In other words, we need a reference point about which we're going to flip this material over. And so we've measured the center point on this material, marked it on the top, and then transferred it all the way across the front edge. And the reason for that is when we flip it, we need to be able to reference exactly that same point on the other side. On this machine, we have a hard stop at the back, so that's going to give us our Y registration. But the center line is going to give us the X registration. So we're going to align it to that engraved line on the table, clamp it down, 
And now we're going to run the cut one tool path. So cut one is now completed. And you can see what we're going to do here. We're going to pick it up and we're going to turn it end for end. So the same Y registration holds at the top. We haven't changed that at all. We've rotated the part end for end. So now we have the blank side up. We've aligned that through the center line to the center line engraved on the table. Now we're gonna run cut path two. You can see here now this center pocket is now intersecting the hole to make it a through hole. Just completing all of the center pockets on cut two. And we're going to go back and do the profile cutout. So the machining is complete here, and you may notice I forgot to turn the dust collection on again. <laughs> and here's our finished part. So we have a blank that's symmetrical within the part itself, X and Y, and then the nesting pattern is also symmetrical, X and Y. So we have two sides, two patterns, one machined on one side, one machined on the other side with the same X and Y alignment. So here's our original part. This is what we were trying to make. We're going to pop them out, break the tabs. And here we can kind of see a little closer the relation. The center one is the, the master. And these parts had tabs on. Uh, and that side not only needs to have the tab removed, but it needs to be rounded over. And so we're using a round over bit because it has a pilot bearing. It will follow the contour and it would also remove the tab and round over at the same time. And here's our finished part. So the whole trick here is the registration of the material in the machine. On this machine, the X is registered off the center line and that allows the flip end for end. And then the same Y surface is registered against the hard stop at the back. And that face stays the same throughout the entire machining process. <laughs>